Sweet. Recording. And then. Oh, nice. Okay. Hello. Oh, no. Oh, that's horrible. Oh, Krishna, oh, Krishna, oh, no. Krishna, 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 Test, test, test. Oh, shoot. This isn't working. Test, test, test. Test, test, test. Where is my mic? Test, 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 test. Real tech. No. Check the speaker. Yes. Check, check. Check, check. Check, check. Yes. Why is that? Check, check. Well, I'm going to use this because this isn't going to work. But does it record what I'm saying? I don't even need a microphone. Excellent. Headset microphone. Hmm. So just make sure you're talking loud and clear. Holy shit.
вот. Okay, I'm on. Ready to roll. Ready to roll. That goes there. This goes here. This goes here. Sweet. Sweet. I guess I can keep this thing plugged in then, huh? Um, kind of hard. I wish you didn't break that shit. Oh, yeah. Shoot. Let's see what this is. Let's I don't want to be too scripted, do I?
<laughs> oh, sweet. <clears throat> Are you there? Hello? Yeah. <sighs> uh, yeah, you, you will, uh, you know, they're kind of like typical price points. Um, they're, they're, I, I got to get on a, 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 an interview real quick. Uh, can, you, can I call you back? Hey, man, can you hear? Dude, you must be like, <laughs> like, oh, I, can't, man. I can't hear you. You can't hear me? Oh, no. Did my mic still can't hear me? No? Okay. See if I can get this thing fixed out. Why is it not working? That work? Nope. Son of a snickerdoodle. <laughs> Technology, I tell you. All right. Bringing in the bad boy. Is that better? Can you hear me? All right. Oh, my goodness. Can you hear me? No? Can't hear me? Seriously? Oh my goodness. Ah! Can you hear me? What the hell? No? Screen. This is stupid. Um. Is that better? Can you hear me? No. Oh my goodness. Help them find a way. Help them find a way. Hello? Can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes. My bad. Okay. I think it was on my, me. Uh, the, it was going through the headphone output. Um, yeah, I don't know what the heck happened. I, I don't know. I'm trying this on. I have a Surface uh, Pro. I don't know. I usually I do it on my... Um, <laughs> I have a, a Mac Pro that I usually do it on, but uh, my, daughter, my daughter is using it, so <laughs> priorities. <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, yeah, it, it might have been me, man. Um, I, I I had the output on a headphone output that was leading to no speakers. So um, I think it was uh, actually me uh, where the audio issue was coming from. Yeah, because I have an audio interface uh, that like I didn't have it engaged as, as having the output. So. Yeah, so uh, yeah. So you can hear me. Uh, yeah, I hear you good. Okay, good. I was like, God dang, I just, <laughs> and I was like, damn it. But like I was saying, man, you must be a uh, super like in need because every time you're being called into work or you're, you know, people buzzing you, pinging you, and I don't know if that's the work or if that's the music or what, but um, definitely excited for you to come on and I, I appreciate you taking the time and I, I hope not to take a lot of your time, but I do want to get to know you and normally um i would you know send some uh god uh, struggle on here jeez <laughs> um the beauty of zoom right but um normally i would send you the the 
the um, questions and whatnot, but mm -hmm. I, I was having a hard time kind of wrapping my mind around this one because I was thinking of psychology, right? And then I was thinking of uh, philosophy. So, I mean, there's a lot of ways you can go with it. So I was just like, let's just kind of, I don't want to dumb it down, but I want to um, kind of get your two cents on the matter yeah, and sure. kind of go from there. And um, so, you know, what I'll do is I'll, I'll use this recording um, as, you know, uh, the whole thing. So never, never think that we're live. So if you mess up or whatever, we can always you know, rephrase it or whatever. And I'm, I'm going to cut it up. I'm going to dice it up and, and make it, you know, ours. But I wanted to do is just kind of get to know you a little bit right. um, and, and just kind of get your two cents and get a bio on you and however I can help you out. And then were you going to, do you want to perform it at the end? And then, like I said, I can always put that at the end in the beginning or however you want to do it. So uh, yeah, as, as far as performing, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a live performance, but like, you know, I know, uh, you know, if it's, especially if it's not live, you can kind of go back and add the song in right. uh, or something like that. So I was kind of thinking more along the lines of something like that. Yeah, sure. And, and like I said, that's, that's the beauty of this. I, I, uh, I think it's way cool to have a guest and then have him be also be the music. So, um, yeah. and however I can help, you know, I, I, I followed you on Twitter and I've been kind of, I don't want to say Facebook stalking you, but uh, I've been trying to get more. And I honestly, I, I, I don't even know how I came across us as far as connecting up on Facebook. Like I, I remember, you know, I don't have a whole big base or whatever, but I think I was reading your bio and I just saw the psycho, you know, psychologist. And, and so maybe, you know, let, let's start there and kind of, you know, you can kind of introduce yourself and give me a little bio of who you are, what you're doing, aspirations and all that good stuff. And then uh, if you want to do the music and then we can do the interview, that that's totally cool. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, uh, my name is Carlisle Graves. Uh, I'm uh, from uh, Fort Washington, Maryland, um, and uh, currently live in Atlanta, Maryland. Uh, uh, I just uh, moved into a new house uh, that I bought, um, you know, given the uh, low interest rates that they were throwing out there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It was a good time to buy and, and, and sell your house and stuff like that. And, and so, uh, you know, uh, I'm one of the lucky people who, you know, uh, I'm able to work virtually. So, um, you know, it hasn't necessarily affected my business or me financially. So it's kind of in a good position uh, to get like a slightly bigger house than the one that I had. Um, you know, they, they kind of have a designated space. It can be a man cave, you know, if I decide to get married in the next year. So <laughs> right on. Well, congratulations on the new pad and, um, yeah. you know, hopefully uh, you find Mrs. Wright and everybody, you know, everything goes kind of, kind of along the right way. So uh, yeah, yeah, I got, I got somebody in the pipeline. Uh, yeah, so, oh, yeah. So hopefully I didn't ruin anything then. <laughs> yeah, so, but um, yeah, as far, as far as uh, my background, um, you know, I, I, uh, I probably should, people should know I went to a high school called Gonzaga High School, Gonzaga College High School in D.C. Uh, it was all boys uh, Jesuit uh, college prep high school, um, you know, so it's very well known for like its academics, uh, but also like, you know, they have excellent sports program. Um, you know, they have a lot of guys who play division one basketball, division one football. Um, you know, they had a Stanford quarterback who's uh, playing in the NFL right now. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, the guy uh, who hit the game winning shot for uh, Villanova in a national championship, uh, maybe three or four years ago. Uh, I forgot his name, uh, but he, uh, you know, he, he's a guy that graduated from Gonzaga. Um, and so I played basketball there uh, up until my junior year uh, where I had like a, you know, injury. Um, and, uh, you know, I kind of had like really bad Achilles tendonitis. So uh, pretty much, you know, me playing that season was a wash. And then I uh, kind of decided to focus in more on music. Uh, so, uh, you know, music uh, has uh, been a big part of my life, um, you know, uh, probably from junior year in my high school. Uh, I was able to, like, solo uh, in the choir. I did a lot of solo in my junior and senior year and uh, acted in plays and stuff. And then uh, I went from Gonzaga to the University of Richmond uh, in Richmond, Virginia, the Richmond Spiders. Um, and I was a leadership studies major, uh, communication rhetoric and communication minor and a, a music minor. 
uh, and I performed uh, in a college acapella group uh, called the Richmond Octaves. Um, and, and you know, if you've ever seen the the Pitch Perfect movies, um, oh yeah, it's 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 like those are really good descriptions of what it's like to be in a college acapella group. Like it's uh, yeah, it's, it's really spot on. So um, you know, a lot of those groups there in the movie uh, you know, we performed with, um, <laughs> believe it or not, and uh, you know, it, it's just some time. So. Uh, you know, we were really good, uh, and uh, by uh, my senior year, uh, there's like a cohort of us, uh, about four of us, uh, they were seniors, uh, so, you know, we, um, you know, we, we uh, had kind of, you know, really kind of, you know, advanced the group, uh, you know, to kind of include, like, you know, some choreography and stuff like that, um, and so, uh, and, you know, we uh, uh, were able to win a Cara Award um, you know, for uh, a song on an album we created. Um, you know, so th those are kind of some of the cool things in my background. Um, in college, I was a uh, Cigna scholar. So um, the insurance company Cigna, uh, they had a scholarship for African American and minority, uh, you know, uh, applicants. And uh, I was able to be in that scholarship program uh, at Richmond. Um, and, uh, uh, <clears throat> and then for Richmond, uh, I went to graduate school as a social worker. Um, at Catholic University, uh, and I got a master's degree in clinical social work. And what a lot of people don't know, and what I didn't even know, uh, was that you know, um, if you kind of get on a clinical track uh, in a in a master's uh, graduate program in social work, uh, you know, you're able to uh, be a uh, psychotherapist hmm. uh, once you get your graduate level license. Um, and then uh, you know, after maybe two and a half years of supervision and practice. Uh, you can get a clinical license uh, where you can practice independently and uh, you can, uh, you know, bill insurance and, and bill people's, uh, you know, and, you know, bill, bill their uh, HSA and FSA and all that type of stuff. So, or, you know, even charge people out of pocket. So, um, yeah. you know, in grad school, I kind of figured out uh, that, you know, that's a really good track because uh, there's a lot of business opportunities there. And, um, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, uh, a thing where you can really kind of do a lot and help a lot of people and, and uh, you know, make a good living for yourself. And so I've been a uh, practicing psychotherapist uh, for the past uh, maybe, I guess at, at this point it's maybe 14 years, uh, 13, 13 to 14 years. Uh, wow. So, yeah. Well, uh, you, uh, you, you're, you're very, very well educated, my friend, and, and you don't look that, that, Oh, young i mean or old i mean so yeah, how old are you just out of curiosity uh, i'm about 37 what and a half yeah no way really <laughs> damn brother you look good <laughs> so, so so I, I i got i got a funny thing to say that because you know the, the elephant in the room is people say black don't crack but like i i actually work at it right like uh, okay yeah I, i'm 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 really interested in anti-aging um, and so, like, I, I study, like, some of the, the different things uh, that can be done, um, different herbs, different supplements you can take, um, you know, that help uh, to keep the skin looking fresh, um, to, uh, you know, supplements you could take that uh, slow down the, uh, the shortening of the telomeres on the DNA, um, which is thought to be the, uh, the cause of aging. Uh, so I, I have like a whole suite of supplements I take um, to try to like, you know, slow down the aging process. You know? Wow. Well, <laughs> if you patent that thing, my friend, you'd be a multi-billionaire. So, or, or you could piss a lot, piss off a lot of pharma people. So uh, one of the two, but um, uh, I was going to say, man, you don't look at a day over 23, but uh, you know, uh, that's, that's awesome. Um, thanks for, you know, keeping us up to the loop on things and, and uh, giving us a good bio on who you are, um, you know, just a little snippet on me. I, I'll be pretty quick. I, uh, you know, just finished up with my master's in educational leadership um, mm -hmm. two years ago. Uh, oh, no, three years ago. Uh, yeah, three years ago. Um, and so I did the AD deal. I, I was a, an educator for uh, 10 years in the classroom, did the athletic director for two years. Uh, doing the admin thing, trying to think I could be a big dog. Um, didn't want to do a big dog because, uh, you know, 70 plus hours a week, 
uh, getting yelled at by parents and kids is just not my forte. So um, graciously bowed out. Um, I said, nope, I can't do this because it's just just dismantling my family. But, um, you know, COVID happened and I had a couple of educational jobs kind of lined out and they kind of got, you know, internal hired and all that kind of stuff. So um, long story short, I found where I'm currently working now for North, North Point Recovery. Um, and I was in a very fortunate opportunity to create a uh, adolescence program. So I'm working with um, 12 to 17 year olds with mental health, behavioral and addiction uh, issues. And wow. so I'd like to say I've been doing this for 12 years because as a teacher, it's kind of similar. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, but I feel with North Point, like it's pretty awesome because I have the resources as a psychiatrist. I have the resources of a, of a psychologist. Um, we have a nurse, we have, a, you know, everything's just that we're a loaded facility uh, with all the resources for kids. So it's, it's pretty cool. And, um, you know, been married to my wife for, oh boy, 18 years now and two kids. And this is the side gig, man. I I've been trying to, you know, get this thing off my mind for the last five years. And I finally just picked up my balls and did something right and got it going and got myself vulnerable. And, uh, and just, and so here I am, but, uh, awesome, man. yeah. So uh, like I said, it's, it's, this is amazing. And I think coming back to the anti-aging deal, man, we'll have to, you know, do another podcast just on that one. So <laughs> that was amazing. But do you want to um, go into the music part? Maybe do us a, a two and a half snippet or whatever you want to do or however long you need. And then, and then uh, go sure. into the old interview or do you want to do the interview and then the, the, the music? Uh, yeah. Why don't we do it at the end? Okay, sure. Sure. Okay. Um, so just to kind of talk about what's been on my mind and, and, you know, it's actually kind of a, a blessing that we kind of didn't meet up that one day because I was just so like, I wanted to have a, a, a collaborative effort with you to kind of get, pick your brain and kind of get your, your background and everything on it. And, you know, I just been really been doing philosophy a lot for myself as of late. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm going to go basically on one question um, and I'm hoping that, you know, there's three total questions, but the first question would be the relationship between philosophy and psychology. Um, and then does psychology come from philosophy or philosophy come from psychology? And then why do these theories never have the same conclusion? So um, just to kind of give you that. Um, and I, I, the other part of it too, is that I kind of like not scripting things so much and get more of an organic, authentic response. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just hoping, you know, really, I just want to get your two cents on it. I want to get your input. I just want you to just be real. And if, if, you know, F words come out, cool. <laughs> um, you know, if, if you had a horrible, um, and I don't know if you've listened to any of, of any of my podcasts, they've been kind of all over the place, but uh, that's the that's the ADHD of me, but um, you know I've, I've I've dealt with depression and anxiety. I've had some uh, a good friend of mine deal with addiction, who's still in addiction, which is really kind of crazy. Where I was doing an interview, a Zoom call while he was in rehab. So, um, but I've also uh, my last one uh, over emotional intelligence, and this is where you kind of fall in. It's kind of a follow up of this series of um, you know what what is emotional so intelligence and i think you could hopefully enlighten us on how you know this psychology and, and philosophy realm can kind of kind of coexist coexist for some part of how it works in your line of the work you know and obviously we can keep you know people's names and everything you know out of the loop and all that but i really want to try to just get the root and go back to that question of you know what is the relationship between philosophy and psychology so if that gives you a little bit of time just to kind of wrap your mind around my simple questions, if you ask me, but it could be way out there for all I know. <laughs> so what do you think? Oh, wow. Well, that, that, that's a very, very broad uh, question. Um, uh, you know, um, and, uh, you know, as far as I, I think you said the, you know, what did it, what did the philosophical foundation of psychology? Is that, is that correct? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, what are the relationships between uh, philosophy and, and psychology? 
Um, well, yeah, I think that, uh, you know, for me, uh, some of the you know, types of philosophy I studied in high school and college, uh, you, you kind of start with uh, you know, some of the, the Greco-Roman uh, philosophers like Aristotle and, and Plato. Um, and uh, you know, from, from what sticks out to me about Plato in particular uh, was you know, his, his notion of uh, idealism, right? The notion that uh, you, know, you have these kind of uh, purified forms uh, that are complete pure mental constructs um, you know, that kind of pervade, uh, you know, our thinking, um, you know, and, and everything. Um, and so, you know, for me, uh, it, it, it's kind of a sense that like, you know, for, for him, the, the essence of, 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 of what it meant to be a human and what it means to live in the world, you know, is psychological, uh, you know, in its purity, right? That, you know, a lot of philosophers, you know, and a lot of different ancient cultures, you know, they, they tend to come to the conclusion, even today with like Elon Musk, <laughs> um, you know, and some of, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> some the, you know, some of the, uh, some of the, you know, newer, you know, uh, you know, in the age thoughts are kind of based on like a, you know, technological foundation, but, you know, it's always comes back to the idea that, um, you know, that there's kind of something some level of reality uh, beyond uh, the physical um, uh, that uh, the physical is, is a representation of um, and that for human beings, our access to that uh, comes, you know, uh, through the mind um, and, and through forms, through mathematics, uh, which, which to me is, is, a, is a kind of like a, a, a type of formalism um, where, uh, you know, it's kind of abstracted concepts um, you know, that, you know, we, we, we can look, you know, at things and, and kind of abstract and, and kind of um, apply something like a number to it, right? Um, you know, that, is, that is, is an abstract concept, but like our ability to tap into the mysteries of the universe um, and, and of science and of technology um, and to be able to advance ourselves, uh, you know, it has a lot to do with, you um, you know, looking at things from a very mental, um, abstracted standpoint, where, where you, you can't necessarily physically feel something like a number, right? But but like we know that, you know, mathematics <laughs> has, is 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 a, is a form is a you know it may be the foundation of of reality on a certain level, um, and so you know I, I think that um, you know psychology you know if, if we kind of understand it as understanding the human mind and human perception um and understanding you know how, how it is uh that our perception leads to experience um and then how uh you know that that experience is, is guided by what we perceive um you know it, it and how how what we perceive causes us to create uh meaning and and create in the world um you know, I think that like, you know, psychology is, you know, to some extent is the foundation of philosophy uh, because it, it, it kind of starts with uh, looking at the physical world around us um, and trying to come up with kind of abstracted ways of, of understanding uh, to kind of create, you know, different laws, um, you know, and, and try to put a, a particular uh, foundation on our experience you know, a, a, you know, the philosopher's own, so to speak, where like we're trying to find like a, a foundation of logic, you know, um, you know, a, a foundational beliefs, uh, foundational axioms uh, that allow us to be able to, uh, you know, um, you know, interpret the world um, and kind of understand truth, so to speak. Um, and, and so it's, it's, it's always, I think the philosophy always comes back uh, to you know, what, what are, what is the most foundational possible beliefs, uh, that you can have that, that you can assume about reality. Um, and then, you know, how do you abstract from there to come up with, uh, you know, uh, different laws and principles of thought, um, and of, uh, you know, the universe, um, to, to optimize your experience of it. Um, you know, and so it is a psychological ex exercise in that sense. Absolutely. And, and I, you know, it's just, it's just fascinating to study up and read up on this. I mean, if you look at the word psychology, 
you know, it means the study of the soul, right? So, um, and, and it's, it's, it's like you're saying how we can't, the soul, you know, it's not something we can touch much like those numbers, like you were saying, but then, you know, philosophy is a, a love of wisdom, right? So you think that those things would coincide with going, you know, with one another or at least work in unison, um, but it always seems like they're always defying or challenging one or the other. And so, you know, that, that kind of brings me to my, uh, you know, the next point, you know, does psychology come from philosophy? Does it emerge? Does it r- arise from, from one another? Or does philosophy go um, or come from psychology? So, and, and I, I would particularly would like to know more so like with your, your clients, like I, when I'm dealing with a behavior, right, uh, of, of the psychological of this person, I base my questions on the philosophy of where they're, where I'd like to help them go. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, Or do you say, all right, I want to look at this as a science part and I want to really analyze the, the, the habits and the behaviors of the person, you know, the study of that person and then base my, my response or my conclusion with my philosophy, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, I, I, think, I think it makes sense. Uh, the, the way I understand that question, um, yeah, it kind of you know, becomes like a, a kind of chicken and egg thing that, that's kind of, you know, difficult where, um, you know, it's, it's we kind of observe a, a causal relationship between uh, two things um, and, 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 you know, uh, it kind of becomes like a paradox as far as figuring out, you know, what, what could have come first. Um, uh, so yeah, I I prefer to look at it, uh, you know, not as much of a causal relationship, but more as kind of like a, a kind of a, a field relationship, um, where uh, you know they they maybe they kind of both, um, you know, have just a relationship that kind of feeds into one another. So it's kind of like the snake eating its tail, um, mm. um, kind of thing, and creating like that that. Uh, the infinity yeah yeah infinity. yeah right. okay right um it, 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 and you know so the, and I, I think you know especially with plato like you know he's dealing with concepts that are kind of outside of time right you know when he talks about the forms um and, and so i think you know even with something like philosophy and psychology uh, from a platonic perspective right these would be kind of things that kind of they're concepts that exist outside of time uh, where they just they they always kind of eternally inform one another, uh, ra- rather than like uh, you know being able. To, I, I'm not sure we could ever figure out per se, uh, you know, how like which one is foundational. Um, yeah, it, it's it's yeah I, I, like yeah I, I'm I'm not sure it's possible to kind of um, you know come up with uh, that uh, just from a logical standpoint of of you know what what's foundational, but you know but I, I think it's it, it, it is it is easy to point out how you know there's different ways each give rise to each other right so um as far as uh you know it, it, it's interesting like when i first started studying philosophy you know the, the, the kind of cool thing the teacher always says that you know whether people realize it or not everybody's a philosopher right <laughs> like <laughs> elon musk <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so so, so like er, er, everybody kind of has um, you know, a, 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 a certain, uh, belief system, uh, that they may or may not understand how they got, <laughs> um, and, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and then a lot of, uh, their thinking, uh, you know, um, and experience arises uh, from that belief system. Um, and, and uh, you know, uh, and, and so, uh, you know, if you if you kind of change a person's foundational belief, uh, then you you can uh, change their experience, uh, but then but then change their philosophy in a sense, mm-hmm. right? Because uh, when they, when they kind of see that uh, their foundational beliefs may have some certain errors in them, um, or or that it's been influenced, uh, you know, by certain uh, traumas they've had uh, that have created like. Um, or certain lies they've been told about themselves, or certain limiting thoughts and beliefs they've been given by uh, the society around them, the parental figures, 
um, you know, it, 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 it's kind of like, uh, yeah, like it, it affects, uh, you know, their, their philosophy and, and what direction uh, did they take their life, right? Um, and, and so, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not even sure I should use this example, but I think it's funny. Uh, yeah, you know, like you know, when I when I was younger and I played basketball, the whole thing, you know, was like you know, white guys can't jump, right? Like, but but like you know, it's a good movie. <laughs> you know, like as, as I've gotten older, right? Like like you know, yeah, I think that like you know, you get Brett Barry in the dunk contest, dunking from the free throw line. Um, you know, uh, you have certain guys come, and and now it's kind of like you know, most white guys that play basketball can dunk. Um, yeah, it, it pretty much do any dunk that, that you know anybody of any race can do, right? So it's, it's you know, but but I think like it's you know it, 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 when you have like a foundational belief, right? Um, like it 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 would it may literally affect you know how it is that you know you proceed in life after that, right? That like you know if if you believe that like people of a particular race, if you believe in race as a, as a as a concept in general. Right, like it might affect the way you practice as a basketball player, um, and, and and how you choose to develop your game, um, right? And then then you kind of change that belief system, um, and then like you know it opens up a whole new line of experience and a way of self development. Uh, so from from a mental health standpoint, uh, you know I think that uh, yeah I I kind of uh, I, I'm always kind of thinking and and, and looking at you know, when a client tells me about certain things, um, yeah, I, I like to let them, uh, I like to talk to them about anything they're interested in talking about. Um, you know, I, the, the second internship I had in grad school, yeah, I had a really good instructor and she, the thing she told me was like, you know, don't, don't come with an agenda uh, because, um, you know, when, when you come with an agenda, it's like, you know, you, you're trying to impose a particular, uh, you know, way of thinking on the client um, that, that, you know, they may not understand, right? So, uh, you know, at first you kind of let them, you know, talk about what they think is important. <laughs> um, and, and, and then, uh, you know, over time, once they gain your trust, like you know, they start to kind of let you into the deeper layers of their mind. Um, and then, you know, you, that, that's when you can, w once they kind of drop down those defense mechanisms and that barrier, and they, they allow you to see their subconscious uh, that's when you're able to kind of, uh, you know, uh, make suggestions and, and kind of question the, those foundational experiences and belief systems, uh, particularly with like people who like go through some type of traumatic experience uh, when they are uh, a kid, uh, you know, if they've been abused in certain ways, right, you know, that it's a foundational experience that they may not realize has created a certain belief system around the world. Um, and, and so about the world, right, so like, uh, the psychologist Eric Erickson, uh, you know, had, had this notion of, uh, you know, at certain phases of development um, that, you know, each phase of development is characterized by a particular type of conflict um, that has to be resolved, right? And, and so, like, you know, as a, as a young kid, you know, like as a baby all the way up to maybe about a year and a half, right? Like, if you are nurtured effectively and properly and, and you know, not in an abusive environment, you, you may have a sense of the world, that it's peaceful, that it's loving, that it's caring, right? Whereas if, if you grow up, you know, in a traumatic environment, uh, you know, you, uh, you're more likely to have a sense of the world as, you know, more nihilistic, uh, more like uh, meaningless, more uh, conflict-based um, mm. you know, as, as, as a foundation. Um, and, and so, you know, what's good, what's good is that, you know, as you can regress people uh, to, uh, you know, certain foundational experiences they've had in their life, um, you kind of help them to see, you know, like, you know, I always try to get people to talk about, like, well, what did this make you believe about yourself? What does this make you believe about the world? Um, you know, because, it, you know, those, those kind of foundational uh, beliefs kind of lead to, you know, uh, how you can start to help them understand uh, behavioral patterns, um, you know, that are, that are maladaptive. So, um, you know, it, <clears throat> so the, the bigger question is, you know, I, I think that, you know, it, the way I understand philosophy, um, it, it, it's kind of about like establishing what is the, the, the kind of basis of our experience um, and, 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 and trying to establish that and then kind of extrapolating from there. Um, it's me, all philosophy tries to do that. Um, so, so, 
you know, from that standpoint, you know, I think that, um, you know, the way I practice psychology and therapy uh, uses, you know, kind of has that philosophical foundation, definitely. Uh, yeah. And so I, I think that psychology does mimic philosophy in that sense, right? Uh, especially, especially like the Fordian uh, types, uh, you know, uh, but, but really I, like we're, we're kind of trying to establish, you know, what, what is the basis of the development of the human mind, right? So right. People, people who are more Freudian, um, right, you know, it's kind of the foundational relationships that, you know, you had with your, your parents um, and, and, and kind of the basic innate drives, especially the sex, sex drive, uh, <laughs> You know, and that that type of internal conflict and how that leads to the different layers of the mind, uh, you know, whereas in cognitive uh, behavioral and uh, you know those types of uh, fields, it's uh, kind of you know looking at different belief systems um, or, or the influence in the environment, right? But but yes, so yeah, for, psychology does have that uh, philosophical um, basis in the sense that like it, you know, from a theoretical standpoint, they are trying to establish kind of like a foundation of uh, what the mental experience and behavior experiences stems from. That was a long answer. But <laughs> no, no. And, and that that's, I mean, how simple that question is, right? It can go many different variations, right? Yeah. But I kind of want, I want to unpack it. And so, you know, you talk about the belief systems. And so when you're having those belief systems and, and, you know, much of my clientele uh, and we, and you talked about how, the belief system, which is the principles and the core values of, of that, that family. Right. And so they probably don't have the great, you know, beliefs or the principles in their lives or the values of, you know, of morals and that kind of stuff. So it's really fascinating to, to hear that from you um, as far as, you know, when you're trying to deal with people that don't have that and you're trying to restructure and recreate that, that belief system. Um, because they're always either in survival mode or they're thriving, like you were saying. Um, it's one of those things where um, you kind of can't have the best of both worlds. And it's really difficult, as I've found, because I've kind of, you know, I'm looking at it more kind of like an educational psychology standpoint to where I'm trying to get the kids and unpack them and their mind thinking and their ways of going about things and dealing with it. But um, it's, uh, it's, relations to mind over matter and that, you know that kind of goes back to the white man can't jump kind of you know movie and 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 you know i i kind of do I, i'm starting to see more and more in my day with the mind over matter and the belief systems that i have that apply to that um and i guess you know to go back to the white man can't jump deal i mean it's almost like you're speaking evolution now so now we're going on a bigger scale, right? And, um, but who knows that guy could, you know, what's his face, Barry could have had a, you know, a great trainer and just loaded up his calves and he has springs or whatever. So, um, but you know, it's, it's, it's interesting to hear that. And, um, but going back to the original question of, you know, does psychology come from philosophy or does philosophy come from psychology? Um, I really like how you package that belief system. Um, and how you treat your, uh, your, your clients with not having an agenda. Because if you go in there, I think if you had an agenda, that's going to sway their, their responses anyways. And they're, they're, you know, that's where they're looking for acceptance or they're looking for, is that right? Right. Cause they don't know. Um, so I think that's, that's awesome. And then, you know, like you said, talking about trauma, um, how that trauma creates that uh, belief system of their world and how they never can trust that back. And to get those, again, those beliefs and those values back um, is just really hard to develop. And we just did a professional development on the Ericsson and the stages of life. And, and I've done a little bit of research, not much, but um, you know, as far as uh, helping kids read, like having them crawl, there's that kinesthetic synapses that help just by crawling helps them get their mind going on uh, the functions of reading or, or how they re read or whatnot. So um, it's, it's very, very fascinating to hear your, your standpoint from it. And like I said, I don't think there's any wrong or right, right reason. It's, it's, you know, at the end of the day, we have to do what's right for our, our clients, right? And we have to do what's best on the knowledge and the information that we're given. And 
and just what I've been seeing, it's so hard to deal with, with clients that are young for one underdeveloped, still going through those process, like you're talking about and trying to gauge where they're at to best help them to get them forward to where they need to be. Yeah. So, but, um, so with the, um, why do theories such as psychology and philosophy never have the same conclusions? Why, why is it that they, and, and I've even, I've talked to a couple of my counselors at my school, like philosophers and psychologists are, you know, <laughs> battling one another, but uh, why, why do you think that these theories never have the same conclusions? Um, but yet, like we were just talking, everything is like you said, that snake or the infinity deal where it's just a full circle. Um, I'd love to hear your, your, you know, two cents on that. Um, that, that, that's a tougher question than it seems. Uh, but, uh, yeah, my, my take. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. No, uh, yeah, but, but uh, yeah. I do think that um, it, my background in social work, uh, um, and then, then even uh, there's a um, a theory that we studied in my leadership school. I think it's called uh, uh, structural functionalism. <laughs> um, hmm. uh, but but it, it's it's the idea that um, you know there's, there's a there's a person in environment, uh, you know, and, and there's a a kind of uh, there's a mas macrocosmic element to a particular person uh, in a particular historical time frame and cultural time and space. Um, and, and so, what, one, one of the one of my most favorite uh, phrases that like modern day philosophers use uh, is this notion of historical specificity. Um, and, and basically, what that means is that like, you know, we we always have to ground our experience and even even from our intellectual um experience and, and thinking um in a particular historical context uh where it has certain historical influences based on the culture that we live in and and how the aims of that culture uh influence uh, our intellectual pursuits um and, and so uh <clears throat> you know, I, I think ph philosophy isn't a monolith right you know th there's a lot of different theories there's a lot of different conclusions on reality Right. Uh, so, you know, you know, you have your, you know, platonic idealism and, and, and formalism, uh, but then, then you have, uh, you know, kind of more like, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, all the way through like, you know, uh, you know, kind of the Marxist, uh, Leninist, uh, like the, 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 and, and uh, the, you know, kind of the, um, uh, the, the notion of uh, like materialism, right? Um, you know, the, the materialism just a sense that, uh, you know, the material world in and of itself is the basis of reality and then is the basis <laughs> of, of thought, you know, yeah. uh, in and of itself, right? Um, and existentialism, uh, you know, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of, you know, with Kierkegaard and, and, and I think uh, John Paul Sartre and stuff, he, he was a uh, existentialist too, right? Um, but, but um, you, know, you know, so I think that like, you know, being able to kind of study the, the historical context and, and why it is that people had these questions in the in the first place, um, because I think it all kind of starts with, you know, what you know, what is it in their environments, <laughs> and in the historical context is causing them to try to answer certain questions, um, and that has to do with like the different power dynamics in a society at a particular time, um, right? So you know, you know, if you if you talk to a transgendered philosopher, <laughs> right? You know, like they they they're, they're going to have certain uh, philosophical pursuits, uh, you know. Female philosophers I've met, they, they have certain pursuits where they're, they're, they're studying like, you know, Aristotle and the, you know, something called the anthemomatic syllogism, right? It, it's kind of a way that, you know, a, a logical discourse is built um, and how that represents a gender bias, mm. uh, right? You know, they, they, you know and, and, and how that works to like um, exclude uh, different people, right? So like one of the basis of folk, you know uh, of western philosophy is the notion of the excluded middle um right like that that, that, that you know you, you have that's kind of one of the foundations of logic right that um you know uh that, that 
the kind of when describing something as it is, right? Like, uh, you know, it, ca it can't be the same thing at the same time in the same time and context. Um, so that, that I believe that that's, that's in the, you know, the, the law of the excluding middle. Um, and, the, you know, it stems from the law of non-contradiction. Um, you know, uh, but, you know, the, the notion that, uh, you know, contradiction um, and, and the notion of both and, right, you know, doesn't exist or can't exist in nature, right? Like feminist philosophers will start to, they start to ask questions about, well, you know, is, is that true? Do, does that represent a universal experience, this notion of the excluded middle, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that, that kind of manifests as us not, some, some of us not being able to process the idea of somebody who's transsexual or transgender mm -hmm. or the notion of many genders. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, it, it, and, and, you know, so the, this is idea that, uh, <clears throat> that the you know, historical context you're in and uh, the different power dynamics and power relationships, um, you know, influence some of the questions and, and the, the, the sense of the foundation of thinking and reality that, you know, that you're uh, likely to, to, to go forth from. Right, where you know, like if you're an ancient philosopher in, in ancient Greece, uh, given the historical context of that time, you're going to ask these different questions. Um, whereas if you're like a feminist, uh, gay philosopher uh, in, in the 20th century, um, you know, uh, that that kind of is looking back at the historical foundations of patriarchy and all that type of stuff is, is going to cause you to ask different questions. Um, and, and, and that, you know, and, and that the historical context and the power dynamics are going to influence what it is that uh, you, um, you know, what conclusions you come to. Um, yeah. So, so, you know, so, you know, from a standpoint of psychology, um, you know, I, I think, you know, that remains true as well. Um, you know, it, you know, if, if you're somebody like Freud, um, and, and, you know, you, you live kind of in a Victorian area, era where you know that on the surface of things there's like a lot of sexual repression um you know um and, and that type of stuff right like like you, you're going to start to if, if you think deeply enough about it you're going to start to observe uh you know how things kind of can reflect uh some of those victorian type values um yeah and and you know start to question you know how does that affect people's psychology you know, mm -hmm. on a foundational basis um it, it, you know uh you know, or if you're Karl Marx and you're living, uh, you know, um, you know, in Germany, you know, at, at a certain historical time frame, you know, and seeing the rise of industrialism, uh, you, you know, you're going to start to question, uh, you know, things from that standpoint. You know, as far as like, what is the influence of capitalism on the psychology of the person, and how it is that they uh, exist in a workspace and how they create meaning, um, you know, and, and what is the influence of that you know, uh, on a macrocosmic level in society, um, you know, and, and then how do you, how do you design a society um, that, that doesn't uh, leave people alienated uh, while also, uh, you know, in, ensuring fairness um, and compensation and all that type of stuff, right? So, um, yeah, that, that's my answer to that, right? Like it's, uh, yeah, historical context and power dynamics and power relationships, uh, I think, you know, influence people's questions about yeah. reality. Um. Yeah, no, I and I, I would definitely agree with that. I mean, if you look at the environment as what kind of you were most talking about and how that in, in, impacts um, and, and just even everything that's going on in the world right now, uh, you can say that that response, that, that answer to that question is definitely is how perspectives are seen, um, you know, uh, I just read, um, oh gosh, the the Peaceful Warrior. Um, it's a great book. Uh, Dan is it Dan uh, Millman? I believe it is. Um, but he was talking about Aristotle a lot, right? And Aristotle would always ask him, uh, "What time is it?" And he'd be like, "Oh, it, it's seven forty-five." Well, no, what time is it? Oh, oh, it's now. So he wanted him to think now, like right. This we got to be present. We got to be now, right? Um, well, what, what, uh, where are we? Oh, oh, we're, I'm in my office. You're in your, your, your man cave, right? Um, no, no, I'm, I'm here. And again, coming back to that contentment and, and placement of where you are and being physically and mentally tuned in, uh, much like what you were saying. Um, I, I, I felt the way I kind of 
interpreted your your answer is that moral compass where um in the philosophy it's, it's part of what we view how we view it right and then the psychology is the the hows and the why we view it that way if that makes sense so as you just saw right there that that you know and i psychology and the and the and the, the philosophy being used um but again just to give a, a different kind of perspective of what you're talking about you know as far as environment um i don't know if you you've probably seen idaho and the the wonderful uh national news last week which i'm not too happy about that but um you know our Anne frank um uh memorial was was vandalized with all these swastikas everywhere right these stickers that were just defaced the mm -hmm. Anne frank freaking memorial right that's just wow but then you know i i i, I followed up on that and if you look at the laws and this is just one category that you were talking about right the laws of of the moral compass and thinking back in Anne frank um she was breaking the law of where she was in germany right Right. Uh, she was breaking the law um, and then the people that were out to kill her were following the law right yes. um, that right there you know people knowing killing is wrong right that 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 morals like my morals would never harm anybody because of that because that's just something i'm against right so i think that's the cool thing and much like i'm taking away from you is that we have to look at what everything you've talked about, those beliefs and those values, those, that, that principle that really guides us to what we're doing and how we go about it. Um, and I think the other thing I've kind of taken away too, uh, of that perspective that you talked about, like it's, it's, it gets into the religious stuff too, right? Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of the Holy Bible and, and everything that we talked about, even up to this, this date, um, is based off the Holy, Holy Bible, right? our um constitution written way back in the day so now i'm talking government right well if you look at the 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 rights to bear arms our forefathers <laughs> thought that you know muzzle musket loading right was going to be the way to go they didn't think about ar-15s right <laughs> so you know these are the things that, that i think about in those philosophies those values those morals that people are talking about you know that we can't can't base it off that because of what it was in that time frame, like you said, and in that that era. Um, even speaking of industrialization, industrialization, there it is. Um, you know, I don't think they knew about greenhouses and how it's going to affect the world. And, and now, so now I'm talking, you know, the the, the global warming and everything else. You know, so um, I love the perspective that you gave, though, that everything in your environment leads to the answer and you can look at it both f philosophically and psychologically um but i again wholeheartedly agree with you circling back to the beliefs and that belief system that you talked about and those principles and those values that you are basing your morals based on what you need to do so um you know this is and this is why i i was like man this is going to be such a hard conversation to have because we're going to be bouncing off so many ideas and so many different ways of going about it. But um, I definitely appreciate your insight from it. And it's just been, uh, like I said, this could go on for hours. <laughs> um, I did, I do want to slide this in too, because when, when we were talking about, um, you're talking about your background in social work and how you kind of came from that. Um, the movie, the matrix came up to me and again, the red pill or the blue pill, do you want to see reality? Or do you want to know reality? And I think those are the, a lot of the things that you were talking about, again, of what the perspective is in your environment, how you were raised, and then what you're going to make because of it. So, um, Carlisle, man, we could just go night and day on this if we really wanted to. So <laughs> I, got, I got time, man. So if you got time, you know. Well, I, I, I always got time, but I, I mean, I don't want to. I mean, that's the thing we got to, we got listeners that we don't want to put to sleep, you know? So, um, but let me ask one last question and then we'll, we'll get to the, the tunes. Um, your go-to philosopher and then your go-to psychologist. Oh, oh man. Ah, got you again. It's four, four. <laughs> uh, that, that, um, 
Yeah. Take your time, man, because I can edit it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I would say, I, from psych from a psychological uh, standpoint, um, it, it's it's hard for me to name a a particular person because uh, I I'm kind of more look at like a, a a particular orientation. Okay. I have I have, I have a go to orientation. Okay. You know more so than a a. Uh, particular person okay um, although I, I will say that uh abraham maslow uh, okay yeah uh with the hierarchy of needs mm -hmm. um is a kind of foundational for me just from the standpoint that um you know i like to study a lot of neuroscience um and kind of understand like what's actually happening in somebody's brain um and 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 how that correlates with uh, what their psychological experience is. Um, and, and so, you know, with that, you kind of start to see how, you know, different people's uh, brain states uh, can uh, represent uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, where mm -hmm. um, people kind of who come from a traumatic background um, and who, um, you know, have, have kind of been influenced by society in certain ways. Um, you know, if, if they're part of like an underclass in a, in a particular society um, that, that's not in the dominant uh, culture or, or just in a dominant position in, in a historical context uh, where, you know, they're, they can kind of be stuck at a certain level of the hierarchy of needs mm -hmm. uh, that Abraham Maslow talks about, uh, right? Where like, you know, you, you have, um, you know, just certain basic survival needs, um, and, 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 and kind of certain needs that um, don't have to do as much with a sense of self-actualization, um, but are, are kind of just like focused on, uh, you know, maybe the next, you know, day ahead, right? Um, and, and then how that affects people's ability uh, to uh, condition the brain uh, to, to think big, to, to think outside of certain uh, limited framework. Um, and, uh, you know, how that influences their, their psychological experience. Um, you know, and so like, if you're kind of stuck in a certain basic survival mode, like you talked about, right, where you talked about either you being, you're surviving or you're thriving. Mm -hmm. um, like if you're stuck in a survival mode, um, that it literally influences, uh, you know, how your brain wires itself. Um, and, and then it, it creates this particular psychological experience that's hard to break out of. Um, yeah. But, you know, and, but then if you're in a thrive mode, um, you know, uh, you, you start to get to the higher levels of self-actualization um, and, and kind of community orientation and that type of stuff that Maslow talks about. Um, and, and so, um, yeah, I, I definitely think yeah, if I if I had to pick one person, uh, I, I would say Maslow. Um, you know, j just from because I, I think that you know that that hierarchy of needs is a great uh, tool. Um, you know, uh, to kind of understand uh, different. Uh, psychological states that people can get stuck in um, yeah no that that's a it's a it's a great foundation um because i you know as an educator i came from bloom right and so i kind of saw the levels of education and how you know people learn uh but doing the maslow like trumps that by tons because you can't <laughs> you can't have the mental <laughs> side of you and the emotional side of you ready to learn much like we were just talking about as far as, um, you know, being comfortable to learn and being safe to learn and, and knowing that you have that self-actualization and going up the, the hierarchical needs of, of that person's, you know, uh, psyche. Uh, but um, that's just, that's just ironically strange that that brought up, but who would be your, your philosopher if you had to choose one philosopher? <laughs> um. I, I think uh, I, I don't know why Kierkegaard is coming to mind. Okay. Um, uh, and um, he, he, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to describe, you know, his, his philosophy in a very simplified way. Yeah, I, I'm not even sure I completely understand it. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think 
you know, what was interesting to me about him uh, is uh, that, you know, I, I think that um, th this notion of, of existential dread, um, it, uh, I think that comes from him. Um, um, and, and it's, a ex it's an existentialist philosophy, but um, <clears throat> yeah, I think what's, what's different about him from other existentialists is that he has that religious aspect um, that spiritual dimension uh, where like he, 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 you know, to me, it's interesting that he would go, he, you know, he kind of went uh, to like a, a particular religious foundation, uh, you know, to kind of uh, resolve some paradoxes of, 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 of life uh, in, in his mind. Um, and, and so I'm a spiritual person. Um, and, and, and so, uh, yeah, kind of being able to be a philosopher and then have a particular religious orientation and then, you know, to be able to kind of combine the two in, in a coherent way. Um, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, he, he'd probably done that better than anybody else, um, you know, out there. I, I do like Descartes um, in the sense that like uh, his, his notion of, I think, therefore I am. Mm. Uh, a lot, a lot of, a lot of philosophers think it's like lazy. Um, but I, I think he's right on the money just because I am a psychologist, right? That, that, you know, just the, the idea that, like, um, that, that, you know, consciousness um, and being a conscious being is foundational to reality. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I think that's essentially what he was trying to say, right? That, that, you, you, that you, you can kind of, you know, when, when, like, if, if you ever take a philosophy class, like, you deal with somebody called the, the, the solipsist, right? Which is, which is the person who uh, is going to ask, well, how do you know you exist? Right. Mm -hmm. right. Um. <laughs> well, I, I actually, you know, I took one philosophy class and I got kicked out of it because I had my rage against the machine mentality and said, I got to challenge and question everything. And my philosopher, teacher, instructor guy was like, uh uh, <laughs> doors that way. So um, I was like, wow, first day. Well, but. Um, that yeah. that's awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so so yeah, just, so um, yeah, just you know, I think that like you know, you know, I, I think he's right on the money that like you can kind of doubt away all aspects of existence, and what do you have left? Um, yeah. you know, and, and uh, you know that that consciousness that is kind of um, existence itself, um, and you know it it it, it, it existent itself um if you know there is exist even nothingness is a form of existence and so you know just when you break it down to existence itself like you know that's a form of knowledge mm -hmm. you know, there, there has to be some knower right uh right you know um you, know, you can't have knowledge without a knower um and, and so like you know consciousness and self-consciousness is kind of the foundation uh you know i think he's right on the money you know, personally. And, and, and so, yeah, like I, I, the, I think therefore I am, I, I think is, is, is great. The, the, there you go. the foundation. Yeah. And also, nice. Well, that's, uh, like I said, Mandy, I know these questions aren't the easiest, but uh, I think that's to really, to really wrap this up of this kind of interview. Um, I think challenging your beliefs and questioning your beliefs and then studying them and knowing them and how they operate is kind of a, a, a big thing um, that we're seeing as far as even as leadership going into today, right? And so um, I loved kind of putting you on the spot just to see what you're, you know, we're going to respond and how you would respond. And you were cool, like the other side of the pillow. So it was really cool to kind of see that. But, um, you know, I, I appreciate you coming on, you know, the Running Educator podcast and, and giving us your two cents and uh, um, enlightening us with a lot of, um, and that's the, the hope I get that people get from, you know, that, that, that going back to that first question of the relationship with, you know, philosophy and, and psychology, but I hope it opens up some discussions because a lot of the things that we're doing now needs to be looked at. And a lot of things that we're, how we look at things need to be, um, you know, judged with that moral compass and, and, and beliefs and the values and all that. So um, with that being said, uh, Carl, Carlisle Reeves. Yes. You can play a little tune for us. So I, I, I really want to 
check this out because I, I dug your music and it was pretty cool. So I'm hoping you're putting you on the spot for the fifth time to, to play some tunes for us, man. So what you got? <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. So uh, this is uh, a song I released uh, about uh, you know, being in the pandemic and kind of being isolated from somebody you love. Um, it, it's, uh, it's, it's called Corona Blue. Um, you know, just because, you know, there's a feeling of isolation, I think is, um, you know, uh, something that, you know, a lot of people kind of experience or, or, or just kind of being alienated from their friends and isolated from their friends for prolonged periods of time. Uh, so I, yeah, I kind of imagine that, you know, two, two people who, you know, don't live together and maybe they traveled across the country to see each other and then they were locked down and they weren't able to see each other and what that would be like. So, uh, so here we go, Corona Blue 2020. Thank you. 
Wow. That's, uh, that's amazing. Where, where can we, uh, where can we download that at or get that from? on all the major platforms except Apple, Apple Music. So you get on YouTube Music, Amazon Music, Deezer, uh, Tidal, um, pretty much all the, the major platforms. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure it's on Apple Music yet, but other places are uh, people might listen to Apple Music Music. Okay. Well, I'll make sure to, to promote that out. I mean, uh, like I, I think when I, when I first listened to it, you know, it's so organic, I can feel the soul i can feel like the the music to me was speaking to where it was like the separation like that's what i, I could feel uh in, in the in the music um very organic you kind of have a a very seal like voice um uh like i said the, the, like the thing that came to my mind is like you're an old soul but you're a young cat kind of a person so um it, it's it's kind of cool that um that you shared that and i mean Dude, you're, you're like, I'm just amazed. You're such an amazing person. And uh, I, I just, I'm so floored by uh, this, just this interview. And like I said, I'm glad that we connected through, you know, Facebook and um, I'm hoping we can have some more conversations. Uh, who knows, maybe in person, I can travel out there and we can shoot the shit and whatever. So um, I know, I know my family and I want to get, want to get back East and, and, and do some sightseeing and stuff around there. So if you don't mind uh, touring us around, that'd be awesome. But um, my friend, it's like I said, I'm I'm glad I'm leaving this 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 conversation, but I'm leaving it in like in awe. Um, you, you've given me a lot a lot of insight, a lot of, a lot of good things to think about. Um, not only that I can help others, but I'm hoping that people can use this to help others as well. Um, and uh, I, I definitely appreciate you coming on. So. Yeah, this, this is great, man. Uh, it, 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 it's out of the blue, but like, uh, yeah, it's awesome. Uh, I'm honored that you, you know, chose me to have on here, um, and I'm glad I could, you know, uh, share my perspective. Uh, and it's to me, it's really cool that you picked up, you know, that like, you know, I kind of have, you know, both things, you know, uh, you know, as far as philosophy, psychology. You know, I, I guess you see that from some of the stuff I post. Um, you know, that you know, kind of have have that bent. Uh, so you know, it's cool to, to see that people notice that. Um, you know, that that's what, you know. Definitely. Well, um, hopefully, uh, you know, I'll, I'll sure be in, in contact as far as you know on Facebook and see what's going on and checking in on you. Um, I'd like to connect up, uh, maybe do a, a part two if if anything. And like I said, we can go to go to the anti aging stuff. But uh, <laughs> um, I'd love to connect up with you, man. You're you are, like I said, I think people need to hear what you got to say because you got some good stuff and a, a great perspective of it and a good foundation that, that definitely goes along with it. So um, from uh, this old guy and old cat, old soul to an old cat and an old dog or old soul with a young cat, um, you know, like I said, it's, 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 it's refreshing. Uh, and I, I think the other part of it too, like you said, with the Carolina or the Corona Blue, uh, you know, you were just sharing um reach out and you know talk to someone you know don't don't be afraid uh, i've never met you and i'm glad i did and i'm glad i'm, a, I'm glad what i can call you a friend because it's just one of those things that you just build a friendship and you just keep going so um i'm hoping to keep in touch uh i, I appreciate everything you've done man and and are doing and so uh keep keep doing keep trucking uh, keep looking young <laughs> but no uh dude like i said i wish people could see you because like i don't know I, I just everything that you were saying like yeah, i've been 13 years here doing this and that and i was like oh he's got to be you know 40 something it's got to be my age and here you are 30 freaking two i see how you are so 37 oh even better so we're almost there almost oh, there not, not far away. but um but yeah, um, I'll, I'll try to connect up with you um, after the new year. You got any big plans for Christmas or are you just kind of hanging out? Um, uh, I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I haven't had a vacation the whole year. Um, and so I'm waiting on a the house I used to live in uh, to close that's been kind of held up. Uh, so I'm hoping for it to close before Christmas so I get you know, a nice little payout from that. And I can take that and go on a there you go because I've, I've been working you know i haven't taken i haven't had a vacation the whole year 
um, you know, in this field, uh, you, you need to have vacations to give yourself a mental break. I've been yep. seeing a, a lot more clients than normal, so uh, that, yeah. that's that's the the goal is, is to head to Miami or, or Cabo or something. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, Belize is a wonderful place if you ever get a chance to go there. But um, I actually was in Belize this time last year for a friend's 40th birthday. Oh, you were? Cool. Yeah, I, I was there three years ago. Uh, my family and I went down there. I was doing some service learning and we stayed in San Ignacio and then we went down to Cape Cocker and um, that place, dude, as an ADHD brain, like the motto of go slow, I was like, yes, <laughs> it was so amazing. And so um, I would love, I mean, honestly, my wife and I are like, let's sell everything and just start a paddleboard shop and just hang out down there and, you know, get our kids through school and go. But um, I, I would hope to retire soon and, and head down there. But people were amazing and, and it was just a great, great landscape. The, the, the interesting thing about this coronavirus, uh, this is a whole can of worms we could explore another time. But like, yeah, me and my friends were talking, we, we think that something like that, that might be possible. Right, we're like, you know, because things are virtualized, you know, this, this probably is never really going to go away. So the, the notion that you can live, you know, wherever you want and still work in the United States, uh, you know, may, maybe uh, you know, very, pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So don't, don't well, that dream. <laughs> yeah, my uh, my one of my cousins, uh, she um, her law firm is, you know, they're working remotely. So she, she's supposed to be in Kansas, but she's living in Denver. And so she's just renting places and she's just traveling to the, to, well, the country alone, but she's, you know, living where she's always wanted to live. And I mean, I think that'd be cool. I mean, you know, get a, get a little shack up in, you know, New Hampshire somewhere and then get, get something down in Texas or, in, you know, New Orleans or whatever. And then, you know, maybe migrate up to Oregon or whatever, you know, I think that'd be, that'd be phenomenal, but yeah. um definitely change the landscape for, for work and remote work for sure. So, and you must be lucky cause you can, you can just pick up and all right, I'll pick you up later or whatever. And so. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it, yeah, that, that's something that's crossed my mind that like, uh, I, I have to wait and see what the state of Maryland does. Uh, with, with the, the majority, like I, the majority of my clients are, uh, Medicaid clients. So um, mm -hmm. you know, right now we can do the, the virtual, I, I, we're not, we're not sure if they're going to, keep that as a permanent feature right if, if they do keep it as a firm permanent feature like that's something that like you know might be possible for me too where i yeah i can yeah I, i'll probably always live if i have my main house in maryland but like you know that you know i can you know <clears throat> go hang out in trinidad where my family's from you yep. know, or, or, ventures man ventures that yeah. that sounds awesome so yeah. uh get all that out before you get married just letting you know now <laughs> too much time left probably so <laughs> there you go there you go well carlisle it's uh good to catch up with you man thanks for everything i hope you have a, a great healthy safe christmas and and new year's um and like i said i'll try to i'll try to ping with you here and now and and try to connect up with you afterwards so yeah man, we, we gotta have part two uh, of this for sure so. yeah this 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 definitely gonna be part one and i'm gonna put that on there that'll be a first for this because it's uh i can't just leave it hanging like this we gotta we gotta got to solve the world's problems so <laughs> so all right man well i'm gonna let you be um hope you have a good one and thanks again and i will uh i'll catch up with you on the flip-flop okay all right man Talk to you later. all right take care